All right, so hello everybody. I'd like to welcome you to my DCOMP online 2021 talk titled Life Outside the Big Four, The Adventure of D on OpenBSD. And I'm gonna start my talk with what I hope is going to be the most controversial statement of all of DCOMP online for this year. And that statement is, OpenBSD is the best supported platform in the D ecosystem. You can see I put quotes around it, put my name on it, put the place where I said it. So it's a real quote. So you can go off and use it when talking to other people. And so even though this is a virtual talk and I can't see you and I can't hear you, and I even pre recorded this thing days before, I can still hear exactly what you're saying. And what you are saying is, Brian. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? And so let me tell you a little bit about myself and how it is that I came to say this incredibly brave statement. Um, so really quick about me, I have been an OpenBSD developer since 2013. I do most of my work within the OpenBSD ports and packages system. I maintain about 150 packages as of now. I've ported a whole bunch of languages to OpenBSD, including D. I'm kind of on a mission to port every single open source compiler and interpreter to OpenBSD. And when I'm not doing all that fun stuff in OpenBSD land, my day job is a professor in the information technology and web science program at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in upstate New York. I do a lot of work actually researching cybersecurity pedagogy, digital humanities, amateur radio communications protocols, and I teach both cybersecurity and web science courses to our students up here. So that's me, that's my controversial statement. So let's talk about the adventure of how I got here and how I was able to make that statement and be quite serious about it too, as I said it. And so like the talk says, this is adventures kind of living outside of what D considers to be the big four. So when I first discovered D and had first gotten uh, GDC running on OpenBSD, send a message to the forums. And one of the first things that I had learned in my time in the forums is that there's this thing called the D Foundation. And there's Walter, of course. And he was the one that told me that they really support four platforms. At least the foundation officially supports four platforms, FreeBSD, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. And what I glean what that means is that those are the platforms that if you go to the download page on dlang.org, those are the binaries that you will actually be able to download directly from DLang's servers. Yes, they also have links to third-party packages, of which OpenBSC now is one of them, uh, but that's not the same thing as actually being able to download binaries directly from the DLang servers and actually have official support from the D community. And so that got me really interested in thinking about, well, what is life like for people who might not be running one of those big four platforms? And so a really great site, if you're not familiar with it, is repology.org, which will give you all the open source packages out there in the world and all the different repositories and lets you compare and contrast which things are in which repositories, which versions. And so for us package maintainers, it's a great thing to have because it lets you know when your packages are out of date and lets you find new ones as well. So what's the status of our D compiler availability outside of the big four according to this site? Well, when it comes to LDC, we have just one package outside the big four. It's OpenBSD. It's the most recent version of the package, version 1.28.0, which was released just a few days ago as of recording. But there are actually a small handful of packages that kind of sort of exist for LDC outside the big four. And the one that exists here is with NetBSD in their packet source repository. In their work in progress section, they do have a package or at least a port of LDC 1.21.0. Um, but it's not actually known if it's working at this point. In terms of DMD, there is only one package outside the big four. And of course, once again, that is OpenBSD. And of course, it is once again, the latest version, version 2.098.0, plus some additional packages for those of you who've been uh, keeping track. I've been sending stuff both to stable um, and to master. And I pulled some of those in as well for the OpenBSD package. There are actually two other packages outside the big four as well. So Packet Source, once again, makes an appearance. They do have a package of DMD 2.093.1. 
again, in their work in progress section, it's only Mac OS and it only actually gives you the compiler. It doesn't actually give you D runtime or Phobos. Haiku also claims to have a package, but that's all the way back to version 2.067.1. And it's the same thing as package source. It's just the compiler, not D runtime, not Phobos. With OpenBSD, you get all of those things. So we are the one and only complete package outside of that big four. And then GDC also only has one package outside the big four. And I know this is going to come as a big surprise to all of us, but it is once again OpenBSD and it is once again the most recent version, version 11.2.0. GDC can be a little bit more difficult to truly quantify what packages are out there because um, a lot of them may wrap them up in their GCC packages. So just for completeness sake, I did check uh, NetBSD. I did check some other repositories and I did not see any evidence of a GDC package. At this point in time, at least, um, OpenBSD is at least at feature parity with the big four in terms of decompiler availability. And so that has gotten me to begin to think and maybe for all of us to begin thinking as a D community, what does it mean to have the big four that are officially supported with binaries on the DLang servers? and now the emergence of other operating systems outside that big four that have all the same general, we'll call it maybe binary support, if not community support, right? You have the ability to download and install these binaries, these compilers without really much of any user difficulty. So how do we get here? Well, in the beginning, I had a really important problem that I wanted to solve. I had learned about D in 2017. And of course, as my mission says, I must have a port and a package of this on OpenBSD. Didn't work out quite so well though. I had actually gone to the point where I was working with LDC, specifically working with the LTS master branch of LDC. And I had gotten to a point where I could compile it and it could in fact build a working hello world binary. Unfortunately, the screenshot of that momentous occasion has been lost to the annals of time and the great bit bucket in the sky, but it did actually exist. It took me about a month to get there. And in a lot of senses, it was backporting a lot of things to that version of D runtime. But I never got much further than the hello world binary. Once you started doing anything more interesting than that, it just wouldn't work. And then as so often happens, life happened. And so I had to table LDC. I had to table this D language port that I was working on for a future time. And that future time was right around March of 2021. I had rediscovered the GNU decompiler um, just through some other stuff that I was working on. And I was like, all right, it's been four years. Let's see what's new. Let's see what's changed. It's a different compiler. Let's go for it. Let's see what happens. And much to my astonishment, for the most part, it kind of just built. There were some things around the edges that I had to take care of, but it built, it started to run, and I could start to compile actually interesting programs with GDC. But it wasn't a love at first sight, unfortunately. Just so you know about OpenBSD, with our ports and packages system, we were and actually still are using GCC 8.4 for any ports that might need GCC. Um, this tends to be our Fortran ports. We use Clang for our C and C++ compiler, but if you have something that does need GCC, it'll use GCC 8.4. And so it was kind of hard to incorporate, right? GDC 11 point, I think it was 11.1 at the time, now 11.2 with this older version of GCC that we actually offered to users. We had a little bit of a confusing state of thread local storage, which I'll touch about a little bit later. And I could not get fibers to work. And this was like my big recurring problem that I fortunately did not have to solve by myself. So that was the OpenBSD challenges. What were the GDC challenges in getting that incorporated into our packages? Well, one, like I had mentioned, there were still kind of errors on the edges um, to complete OpenBSD support. We had omissions for some important facilities that we take for granted on OpenBSD. And of course, as far as I knew, no one had ever tried this before. Um, it turns out that Ian was actually working on it. We actually kind of finished GDC at the same time, but independently and didn't know that the other was actually working on it. So ultimately, Support for D and GDC in particular happened 
for a couple of reasons. First, it happened because there were people interested on the D team that wanted to support our platform. There's tons of thanks to give out for OpenBSD support. Walter, Ian, Kai are just a handful of people who I can think off the top of my head who have been involved in this. Everybody else who worked on POSIX support, right? If you work on POSIX support, we benefit from that as well. It also happened because as Walter had mentioned to me in that very first forum post that I had made, that the D language community is happy to carry code for platforms outside the big four which has been a great bonus for me. And I'm very happy to hear it. And I hope more platforms consider bringing ports to D because of that arrangement that they have where they are happy to carry your code so that you want to keep separate forks and things like that, which are a pain to actually maintain. And then finally it happened because I had known about D, I was interested in it. And I kind of see myself as like a brick allure of sorts, right? Someone who maybe not be making the bricks himself, but I saw kind of all these fun toys that were laid out in front of me. And if I could only reassemble those toys in a little bit different way, I'd have open BSD support. And that's exactly what I did. But of course, our open BSD users expect more, right? These are people whose time and energy I respect, and therefore I want to get them packages so that they can install D, whichever compiler they want, and just be off doing the work that they need to do. So OpenBSD has some really important facilities that I touched on that we kind of take for granted in the OpenBSD world. Um, the two that are probably most famous are Pledge and its younger sibling Unveil. So Pledge is a system call that you can make that restricts the ability to use syscall. So it kind of gives you um, an interesting ability to sandbox your programs. And then Unveil does something similar with the file system where you take away file system visibility and just add back the parts of the file system you actually want this process to see. And then some touch-ups around the edges, like I had mentioned, um, just syncing what D thought was the reality in OpenBSD's headers versus what the reality actually was. And so I've kind of spent every month since March 2021 just kind of syncing things up between the OpenBSD headers and what the D runtime thinks they are. To the point that I have now listed myself in the code owner section specifically for that OpenBSD directory in D runtime. And of course, I want packages of this software. My users want packages of this software. I want to get them packages. I want them to be able to type package add D and just be off and running. So I'm happy to report that you can in fact do this for the most part on OpenBSD. This is my ultimate goal. We are almost there. There's just a couple of pieces that are left over. So if you're on you know, any modern x86-64 machine and you type in package add dub space D tools, you will get dub, you will get your choice of compiler, which for today is just DMD, and you will get all those tools in the tools repository within DLang. Really simple. One command, you've got your whole D environment up and ready to go. My goal is in the future to actually have it ask you if you want dub, which compiler that you actually want with dub. And so once we get GDC hooked up with dub, and once we get LDC hooked up with dub, if you type in package add dub, it'll say, okay, I can give you dub, but which compiler would you want with it? Do you want TMD, GDC, or LDC? And let the user make that decision. There's a couple of reasons for that, and some of them aren't immediately obvious. So the reason that I wanted to have that choice of which compiler you want is one, because dub does not actually tell you which compiler it needs, and you can in fact build dub with any of the three compilers. But also, it helps us with a sanity check because the dub you install based on the compiler you pick will dictate which compiler built that dub binary that you have. And so what's gonna happen is, let's say you pick dub LDC, you'll get dub built with the very same LDC compiler that also installed when you selected LDC to go along with dub. So part of the sanity check to make sure that each of the compilers are actually working and can do more than just build themselves. And also because there may be differences in the shared library dependencies between binaries that are built with these different compilers. And that lets us streamline the minimum number of shared libraries that you need with dub to match that particular compiler. So that was not necessarily obvious, but do be aware that you can actually get 
different shared library dependencies on your D programs, depending on which compiler you actually use to build them. And then DTools is just a separate package just so we can live externally to all the other D components. If you don't like Dub, you can of course just type in package add GDC or DMD or LDC and just get the compiler without Dub. Um, just an interesting side note, just for some historical reasons, your GDC binary on OpenBSD is going to be called eGDC instead of just GDC. There is also the GNU BC and GNU DC, and it already has the name. And there's also a little bit of kind of historical baggage that goes along with a ports version of GCC on OpenBSD. But I can officially say that now OpenBSD, and no matter what D environment you want, is a perfect match, which is why I feel like I can very seriously say that OpenBSD is the best supported platform in the entire D ecosystem. So some current difficulties that I'm still working on, the tools repository, right? So the D tools pack is the repository that that comes from. doesn't actually build out the box, or at least I found it does not kind of on its own want to build out the box when you separate it out from DMD and D runtime and Phobos. Because it kind of assumes that it's going to pull in a DMD tool chain if one doesn't kind of already travel with it. And so for the actual package, I just ripped that part of the build infrastructure out. I would like to find some way to make it easier so that people can build that repository out of the box without also pulling in a whole DMD repository. Or if I'm just doing it wrong, tell me so I can fix the OpenBSD package as well. Also, bootstrapping DMD is a little less than ideal. So we are bootstrapping. So if you install a DMD package, it's bootstrapped with a bootstrap DMD. Same thing with the LDC. It's bootstrapped with a bootstrap LDC. GDC doesn't bootstrap yet because it's still using C++ for its front end. If you don't already have an environment, a D environment, the build system will notice that and kind of suggest to you to install a bootstrap, which of course will not work on any of the platforms outside of the big four. This one's really not a problem. It's just something that people working on other platforms should know about. Um, and the last difficulty is that I found out recently that the dub team doesn't actually run any tests with GDC. So hopefully someday soon we will get there. And I've kind of been trying to patch things on the edges as I can, as I notice any potential issues with dub and GDC. So you might be thinking if you're using an operating system, not one of the big four and now not open BSD, what about me? What about my operating system? How do I get involved porting D to my OS? So my general advice for you is that if your operating system is ELF based and runs on any of x86-64 or 32-bit x86 or 32-bit ARM or 64-bit ARM or 32-bit PowerPC or 64-bit PowerPC, you're basically golden. GDC will probably figure out what you need to do. You will likely have to take D runtime and add all the information about your particular platform. But for the most part, it should be pretty close to a copy and paste job. There'll be things on the edges, of course, but just follow an operating system that might be kind of close to yours. Even better if you're already POSIX based because it will let you save a lot of time. You don't have to re-implement all that POSIX stuff. So for me, my advice would be GDC 11.2.0 should basically now be considered the gold standard for a starting point for bringing up new operating system support for D. It's still in C++, so you don't need to worry about already having a D environment on your system. And you can carry it forward to all the other D environments like DMD and LDC. It's also probably the easiest one to add D runtime and full boss support for, right? DMD being just x86 and x86-64. And LDC, I have just personally found to be a little bit more difficult to get the D runtime stuff up and running. We can talk about that in the Q&A maybe because I definitely don't have time to talk about it um, quite in this talk. But I'm happy to chat more about kind of those challenges that I ran into with LDC. Other advice for other people on other OSs, focus on just one part of the larger ecosystem at a, at a time. D has a lot of different moving parts. You got your compiler, D runtime, Phobos, Dub. The tools, start with the compiler, just the front end, then add your runtime, then add full boss and do all that with GDC because you're probably going to have GCC installed anyway on your system. Once you're at that point, 
the GDMD script is just a Perl script, really easy to get installed. And then from there, you can pretend that GDC is DMD and start building your tools, start building Dub, and then kind of fan out to DMD if applicable, to LDC if applicable. Or if not, just start building whatever D code that you want to build with your newly completed D environment. And D also taught me some interesting stuff about OpenBSD. It wasn't just a one-way transaction. So I learned from DMD that OpenBSD might actually totally support ELF TLS, and nobody actually knew about it. So GDC and Clang still prefer emulated TLS rather than the real thing, but DMD does not. And both myself and another OpenBSD developer have thrown TLS stuff at it and compiled it with DMD, and it just works fine on OpenBSD, which is really interesting. And now we know that thing about OpenBSD that we did not know before. And even though I've been doing OpenBSD patching for 10 years, there's always something new to learn. And so the D environment got me working with bootstrapping, which I really haven't done in the past, and got me thinking about the challenges of how we can have different packages for dub based on what compiler you want, right? And checking to make sure that your compiler actually works, because that's the compiler that compiled that dub binary, and streamlining your shared library dependencies depending on which compiler that you actually want with dub so for the d community to help wrap up to begin to wrap up how can you help life for others outside the big four my advice for all of us would be to err on the side of having too big of a tent rather than too small of a tent a lot of us if we're on a POSIX system it's linux you're probably not really targeting linux you're probably just doing POSIX stuff so if you're writing code and you find yourself writing version Linux, consider softening that to version POSIX instead. Unless you know for a fact that the thing you're doing is definitely Linux specific. A really good example of this came from Walter's repository on his micro Emacs written in D. He was using version Linux everywhere. Nothing was actually Linux specific. So it totally blocked out all the BSDs and Mac OS. And just changing them from version Linux to version POSIX magically made it work on all of those operating systems. So right, consider softening your stance and using version POSIX instead of just thinking all the world is Linux. It might be today, but it will not be all the world forever, right? Of course, the famous fax example. Why else do this? Well, you want to make the barrier to entry as small as possible for those who are porting D and getting up and running and started to make sure that they know that things are actually working so that they can tell their users, hey, not only can you use D, you can also use all this code in D that already exists. So not only does it be more right pedantically correct, it also helps people bringing D up to new platforms. It also gets you more users who, while maybe not the most populous in number, are likely to right, be vocal, be active, and get you good bug reports. Now, who doesn't like good bug reports? And we can also help with porting efforts when they arise. There's two ways we can do it. One is, if you're interested in that OS, dive in, get it installed, see where the D environment is at, and get your hands dirty. Or, if that's not your style, be kind with those people who are asking, you know, newbie questions about D runtime. I had tons of newbie questions with D runtime as I was getting things up and running. I still probably do and will ask them as time goes on, right? Just make it, and I have to say the D community has been great about all that stuff, answering questions, pointing me in the right direction, and really has helped accelerate D support on OpenBSD. Just remembering as other people come along to replicate what I've done with OpenBSD, to just show them all the same great community that you all showed me. So what's next? For me, I'm now on a mission, not just to port every compiler, but to begin the great Linux to POSIX migration, right? Opening up more code for more users, right? And hopefully maybe a little bit of code review and things like that. Of course, getting more OpenBSD D users, I've actually been quite shocked getting emails from people um, just in my private inbox about how it's great and they're really thankful that I ported D to OpenBSD and they now have these tools available to them. And if I'm lucky, maybe I can convince some D developers to start using and thinking about OpenBSD in their development process for D. And then, of course, the never-ending task of finding and fixing right the little things that are left over that I haven't seen yet. Always right, thinking about improving the compiler, always thinking about 
you know, the next good thing with D. So for today, just to wrap things up, if you're interested in D on OpenBSD, GDC is available today on 64-bit x86, 32-bit x86, 32-bit ARM, 64-bit ARM, 32-bit PowerPC, 64-bit PowerPC. You can get GDC on any of those. Get uh, GDC's version of D Runtime and Phobos and be off and good to go. DMD is available on 64-bit x86. LDC is still technically in the proposal stage, but I suspect I will be committing that real soon. Um, and also for now, just available on 64-bit x86. Although for LDC, there will be more platforms coming once that's in. So thank you so much for listening to my story about the adventure of Dion OpenBSD. If you want to reach me, any of those things that are up on the screen now are good. And with that, once again, thank you. And I'll take any questions that people might have.